Hey guys, so a while back I went over my email butler automation. In it, I used it to fight back against hackers who hacked it in my Facebook. You can watch the video here. The long and short of the story is that I got hacked and then because of that, I created this automation that will watch my email for suspicious activity. This isn't an excuse to not use multi-factor authentication. This is just one of those peace of mind type of thing for accounts that you forget about that don't that isn't as protected, um, but you just don't remember what they are because this is the internet in the 21st century. So anyways, continuing on, uh, let's deep dive into the email butler automation. So it starts here with this email received. This is an event listener node. Um, it's basically listening to all the events and we're singling out the IMAP content. Now this only shows up if you have the IMAP integration installed. You can find that here when you can search for home assistant, just look for IMAP and it gives you all the instructions as to how to install IMAP and get everything up, up and going. Shows you how to do it for Google. I think I have it set up for Microsoft Live. Uh, so you can figure it out watching that. But essentially, once you get that set up, you will have access now to the actual event. And once you have access to that event, uh, whenever you get an email, for every single email, you will get an event. So if you get 30 emails, expect 30 events. So next we have this function node in it. We're looking at the payload.event.subject. This is when from that event, the subject is a title. We're just resaving it to something more simple. And this text here, event.text, this is the body. This is the body of the email and we're going to look at that. We're going to basically clean it up, replace any of the, they have sometimes have extra characters like new line characters, so on and so forth in there. We're just cleaning it up and we're trimming it down and simplifying it and placing it into this body um, property on the message. And then from there, we're gonna use a regex search just to see if we find any of these words within the body, uh, password, account, unauthorized. You can put whatever list that you want in there that you feel is applicable. Reason why we're doing this is that I don't wanna send the body to GPT. I'd rather just send the title or the subject. The body seems pretty sensitive, so I'm not gonna send a bunch of sensitive data up to GPT. However, if you are using a local LLM, feel free to send the body instead. You won't need to do this, what I have highlighted here. All right, so once we have that set, we're gonna look at this is compromise. We've set this in the previous one when we did the whole regex search. If we see within the body that one of the words that we have flagged appears, this is compromise is set to true. The next four nodes here are my AI intent nodes, which you can watch a video of how to install it here. Uh, basically, these nodes allow you to easily access GPT within your automations. This first one here is the system node. I'm basically setting the context for the system, telling it that, hey, I have an email and this is its title. Notice that there's a curly, a single curly brace and we're pointing to title. This title is the same exact title that we set within here. So message payload event subject equal to this title. So what that single curly brace allowed us to do is it allows us to dynamically input new information into this system node, which is fantastic. Next, we have the user node here. We gave it the instructions. We are basically telling it that for this account, here's some information and can you check the information and tell me if this title is suspect? If it is suspect, can you just return to me this JSON object? And it's gonna return it as a string. It's in double curly braces because if we have a single curly brace, uh, node, the node environment is going to try to evaluate it, which isn't what we want. We need it to just simply print this out as is to GPT. So the double curly brace is an escape. Next, we have the chat. This is basically the settings that we're using for GPT. It's going to send the information to GPT and return the response. Once the response come, we have the open AI response, which makes it a bit simpler. So it makes it consistent and easier to read. And then we have the simplify payload, which simplifies it even further. So we're going into the payload, looking for the response and just, we're going to just resave that response to the payload. So that way the string that GPT returns will simply be this payload. We have this convert to JSON node. So this is the JSON node. 
what since it's going to be a string we're expecting gpt to return to us a string of a json now i would say here that it's best for you to use the tools node whenever you need to do something like this because gpt tends to get a bit finicky and it may throw in some extra characters in that json string and then this whole thing would crash but for the sake of demo so you can kind of see how there are different ways in which you can use this GPT nodes and all of the stuff that I have here. Uh, I'm doing it this way. This convert to JSON will take that JSON string and convert it to an actual JSON object so we can read it for what it is. Next, we have this is compromised. This is a switch node. We're looking at that payload. And again, this is what we expect from GPT. We've converted it to a JSON. Now we're reading it. If what GPT sends us is true, then we're going to go forward. If it if it's false, we don't go any further. Now, assuming that it's true, if it's between 12 a.m. and 7.30 a.m., it's going to change the colors of the lights in the master bedroom to violet, and it's going to send me a critical notification on the phone. It is currently 12.02. I'm going to be disabling this. And lastly, it's going to send a message to my phone via K. Uh, you can ignore this. This is a custom subflow that I created that's specifically for me to work with K. Uh, if you have your own way of sending messages to your phone, by all means, use that. All right. We sent an email. We're basically saying that the account is compromised. We've noticed suspicious activity. Change your email or change your password now. Let's see what happens. See that running? It's supposed to change once it finds the email. There it goes. So it ran. I felt my phone vibrate. And if I show it to you. Yeah, it says that you need to check your email for suspicious activity. Look for the email titled your account is compromised. So this worked. If I had the other part of this email or this automation activated, it would have changed the color of the lights in the master bedroom and made noise with this. I wasn't trying to do all of that. So yeah, hopefully you guys learned something new from this or gained some inspiration. All right, that's it. Bye.